Yeah, it's your boy DJ Wolf uh, on a hot but sunny Monday afternoon evening. How you doing? Hey, uh, I got a couple things on my mind here. Uh, first thing, um, I might as well go ahead and talk about that, man. I got because I got a lot uh, on the on the mind right now. While well, it's fresh on my mind. First thing first. Colin Kaepernick. Uh, a few days ago, Colin Kaepernick of the quarter, uh, well, he's now second string quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers, uh, was, I guess, was at a recent uh, NFL preseason game, and he refused to stand up for the national anthem. Now, he was saying that he had refused to stand for the National Anthem. They said it was like the third time he did it. I didn't even know that. Uh, because of his uh, opposition to what's going on with black men and black people in this country. And I can understand what he's talking about. Okay. Now, I talked with uh, a couple of people today. And they were thinking, oh, Kaepernick's being un-American un because he would stand up for the National Anthem. Just there are a lot of people who will stand for a national anthem. Usually, people who uh, usually are uh, maybe visually impaired, or they may not be able to stand up. But I know he could. But I'm like, you know what? And then, and then the excuses that, that I hear people saying, yeah, white people. I hear white people saying, is oh, well, he 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 don't have a problem making a million dollars, a, a, uh, millions of dollars a year with his nice, comfortable home. They ain't got a fucking thing to do with him and his objection to stand up for the national anthem, okay? Now, me, myself, I love this country. I served the country three years, six months, 11 days in a wake-up, baby. All right? I have no problem with that. All right? Because about a year ago, I just shot a video, a video I did over at uh, Andrews, matter of fact. Uh, it was, uh, I think it was the day that they had the, uh, what they call that, uh, they always have the air air show. It's the national, it's, it's, it's the air show over there. But anyway, they had it, they had it last year, and I happened to be there last summer. And um, I got real emotional when I heard it. I really, I got very emotional. Because I knew what it take to do what I had to do in living, being born in this country. And I've been overseas. I lived overseas for a while when I served in the military. And I know as a serviceman, as a former serviceman, the sacrifices a family makes. But you have to understand, Colin Kaepernick's uh, protest was had nothing to do about spending on servicemen. Had nothing to do with it at all. His protest was about how African Americans are treated by cops. And I know what some of you are going to say. Oh, well, what about African Americans treated by other African Americans? I'm going to put it to you like this. You have uh, law enforcement who's supposed to uphold the law, right? If they're not upholding the law the way they're supposed to and breaking the law, they aren't any better than the criminals. Okay, and I'm not saying, and this is not applied to all cops because the majority of cops are very good. I knew a few of them myself, you know, but it's those, some of those who are who are breaking the law, who keep getting away with murder, who are being prosecuted, and it keeps going on over and over and over again. So I understand why he he got upset. Now somebody did say, well, why don't he if if he's going to talk about why he do more than just talk, and I totally agree with that too. You know, why don't you just do more and just talk about it? Call it Kaepernick. I understand where you're coming from, bro. But talk ain't going to be enough to take on this problem. Okay? To take on this problem, you're going to have to go out there and, you know, and, 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 and talk to your legislatures and state senators and stuff like that to put the pressure on these guys to make sure that they get things done the way it's supposed to, to take care of these issues. All right? That was like Tamir, Tamir Rice's mom wanted uh, LeBron
LeBron James to talk about it. What is he going to do besides talk? What else? I mean, you know, if he talk, you think just talking alone is going to, is going to resolve the problem? No. It won't. Talking alone ain't going to help. Him. Let's be honest about it. It won't. You know, people say, well, get dialogue going. Yeah, you got dialogue going for about a minute and they quit. You have to continue beyond dialogue in order to make changes. That's the bottom line. Real talk. You know. But I defended Colin Ka Kaepernick on, on that part. But I don't want, I'm tired of, of white people talking about, well, you know, he got a check. If it one for NFL, he would be, you know, shut up with that bullshit. Fuck y'all with that bullshit, for real. You know, now I will say this. Although he has the right to say what he said, if there was, was a regular nine to five job, he wouldn't be able to do that. Let's keep that honest. Like myself, you know. But I'm gonna, I mean, stuff that I talk about, I talk about clearly outside of my nine to five. You know, because I, I, I'm able to do that as long as I'm not at work. Because I'm not at work, no, I'm talking about it right now. You know, and who is this driver in front of me? Slow the ass down. Jesus. But that's just kind of the way I feel. I mean, I got more to talk about my other stuff, too. I'm going to do a show tonight, matter of fact. No, I'm going to have to anyway. I, I need to. Because it's just, it's been one of those weeks, man. For real. I've been meaning to do it over the weekend. I had an opportunity to do it yesterday. I was going to do a special Sunday show yesterday. I didn't do it. So, oh boy. But it's just, it's just the fact that I kind of feel that he did have a right to say what was on his mind. One of the reasons why a lot of some of the celebrities will do this is because they know that there's limited platforms for us to be heard on. You know, if you go to a Grammy show, or a BET award show like Jesse Williams did, or if you go to a Super Bowl like what Beyonce did with her protest song, you know, it'd be seen by a wider audience. That's why a lot of celebrities will take that uh, option to do that, being heard that way, loud and clear. You know, that's why my channel is called for all to hear. You know, and that's the reason why I named it for all to hear more than two years ago because I want everybody to hear where I'm coming from. You know, as a tribute to all African Americans who, who want to be heard loud and clear about their feelings about situations that's going on in their lives. That was the reason I created this channel, for that very reason. So that's the reason why I do think. That you got entertainers that will go that route, but then I know is every time you got an entertainer or a sports figure who go that route, what these white people say and, and um, some outside library will say the same thing. They'll use that as an excuse for you not to talk about it. Well, you get paid all that money, you know, you should, you know, you don't have to use this platform. To, oh, yes, they can, and yes, they should, and yes, they will. You know. I don't have a problem with using that platform, to be honest. But by the same token, I will say this. Don't just talk about it. Take action. And when I mean take action, I mean go to your congressman, go to your legislatures, go out there and, and pound the pavement, so to speak, and talk about it to those people. You know, Beyonce, Colin Kaepernick, and others. Don't make it just a flash in the plan, pan publicity stunt just to sell wolf tickets or albums or get yourself back in the top spot and spot in the NFL you know I want, I do want to say that because I think in Beyonce's case I, you know I do think it was to sell wolf tickets I'm going to be honest with you and then I heard I didn't even see the video yet there were uh, the mothers of the uh, young men that were, that were shot uh, I think it was Jameer Rob, not Jameer Rob sorry Trayvon Martin Mike Brown uh, the young, um, the other young boy down in Florida, I can't think his name escapes me, and uh, Eric Gardner. Their moms were, were, were they were Beyonce at the end, at the v, VMAs last night, from what I heard. And I'm kind of like on the fence about that, but I'll talk about that later. But uh, I know they were uh, several of them were at the De uh, Democratic National Convention, and I thought that was disappointing. So for for them uh, for the. Uh, DNC to sell wolf tickets as well. You know. But my 
my thing of it is, if you can get hurt on a national spotlight, I have no problem with that. But then you got dang old uh, people talking about, white people talking about, oh, well, you know, you get paid real good. You should be doing that there. Really? You got white people doing that all the time. You got a, a, a white celebrities do that all the time. And you never question what they do. But somebody black do the same damn thing, you got a fucking problem with it. Fuck y'all. I mean that. You don't like it, fuck you. Seriously, I don't blame them celebrities for saying that. I stand I stand firm with them on that. But, by the same token, if you want to talk about it, be about it. If you want to talk about you, <laughs> that, you, that, you that you're against what they're doing, then go protest with those protesters. Matter of fact, not only go protest with those protesters, go to your congressman, go to your senators, go to your legislator, and vote. And talk to those guys. You have the power. That's public figures, you have the power to go out there and do more than just talk. You really do. Use it. Now, um, I think what I was going to talk about, I kind of, it kind of break my heart a little bit. On a sad note, I heard that uh, one of my favorite actors growing up as a child, well, he's one of my favorite actors anyway, Gene Wilder passed away at the age of 83. I think it was due to complications from, my, from what I read. Uh, published reports said that he had uh, died from uh, complications of uh, Alzheimer's. Man, I, you know, it kind of, it kind of, it kind of, you know, broke my heart a little bit, man. That was my dude, man. Next to put it like this, him and Richard Pryor made movie magic in those four films that they did. Stir Crazy was a little bit was uh, Blazing Styles, yeah, Blazing Styles, Stir Crazy. Uh, Hear no evil, see no evil, and I think uh, I forgot what the last one was called. But those four, I mean, but particularly those movies, man. I mean, all four of them, even though they said the last one didn't do too well, but still, it's just the fact that those two made movie magic. It was just, it was just, it was just, I mean, they were just the perfect comedy duo, you know. And it's a shame. I've been watching a number of films over the years. And I'm going to tell you the truth. Nothing compares to what those guys did. Nothing. That's just me. You know, I don't think you'll ever, I mean, I don't think you'll, if you ever see it, I don't think you'll see any music, movie magic like that for a long time. You know, I really don't. I really don't. Actually, I was, because I was just thinking, I was just thinking about that earlier. I said, yeah, you know, but those two guys, I mean, really, I, I mean, I, I think the first film I saw them together was, at uh, was Silver Street, and they were pretty good in that. But Stir Crazy Man, they owned it. That was the film I think really was the film that really, to me, said those guys are are are, are comic gold, and they were. They were comedy gold, no doubt about that, man. Richard Pryor was already a box office draw when him and Gene Wilder teamed up teamed up in the 1981 film. You know, of that name with uh. Not, was it Silver Street? No, it was uh, yeah, dude, Stir Crazy. I'm sorry, Stir Crazy. That was the name. Yeah, I'm thinking Silver Street. Stir Crazy was the, was the, was the second film they did together. And like I said, that, that was comedy gold. You know, now, I mean, I couldn't think of two other people who could have played played those uh, uh, those those roles. I really don't, and not at the time anyway. Yeah, we don't. And, and, and like I said, the four films that they did were really kind of, uh, well, you know, Rich Pryor was a little salty on language, but beyond that, they were family friend, friendly films. All four films that they, they, they did together. Oh, another year was the four film. That's right. It was Silver Street, Stir Crazy, See No Evil, Hear No Evil, and Another You. Those are the four films. You know, and like I said, they were predominantly family oriented films. You know. Really, and like I said, there aren't a lot of really good family-oriented films like that anymore, man. You know, not for no no those uh, high-profile, uh, high-quality actors that, that they were. Those two were, you know. So, uh, but my film, the first film that I, I saw Gene Wilder in that I recall ever recall was uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I saw it in 1972. 
love that film. I still love that film. I don't know if I'll watch it again, or at least not for a while, but I mean, I'll watch it for, for, you know, for, of course, for old time's sake and memories, of course. But, but it was a great movie. Yeah, I think it was, truthfully, I think it was the film that actually not only defined him as an actor, but I, I think it was the film that, that really uh, showed you his versatility is an actor. That's just me. You know. I saw, uh, actually, I saw a number of his films. I actually saw to pro The Producers, which is a very good film. I, even when I was a kid, I thought it was very good. And, and I saw Bonnie, I saw him in Bonnie and Clyde. He was good in that. And I, so I saw Young Frankenstein and Blake's House, which was my favorite, one of my favorites. But, actually, he will definitely be missed. I, I, I said, I, I, you know, I hate to hear about it. I just hate to hear about that. So, you know, I said, I, I said, it's just, I think for for real, in 2016, the two biggest celebrity deaths that that kind of like I'm kind of really sad about, honestly, is Prince and Jane Walker. Those two, because, well, for real, Prince, <laughs> no doubt about that, man. I mean, this is a guy who, when I. Uh, probably was about the age of 12, 13, about, no, I was 13, I think I was 13, I was, yeah, I was 13 that year, Some, something like that, about, well, I was 13 when, he, when Press came out on the scene, you know, when I first heard about him, and uh, I was still a teenager like he was, I mean, he was out there blazing trails, you know, and it, it his music was just incredible, just incredible, you know. But and then Muhammad Ali, man, that's, that's another one. Heartbreaking, man. It's just like it's just to me all three of these entertainers define the genre, the genres, respective genres. That's 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 the thing I'm trying to say. And it, it's you know it's a credit to their, their, their to the class, being class acts, all three of them. Yes, including Gene Walker, which I, I, I definitely have to say that because that's a fact. Well, rest in peace, Mr. Wilder, man. Much mad, mad love for you. All right, well, don't have much else to talk about right now. But uh, check out my back episodes if you want to hear any uh, on-demand episodes of my show, DJ Wolf Live. Let's see what's going on here. Let's stop somebody over here. My hands are with I don't want these fools to think I'm doing something. Alright guys, it's DJ Wolf. I got more set back for you. Know how to reach me. Talk to you later.